YouTube, Red Viking Trucker down here in uh, San Antonio. What is today? Today is, today is Monday. I delivered my load tonight. I got about a three hour trip left to, to run to San Antonio, drop this, and then head to Laredo. Um, and literally the last two days of driving, I've had no traffic because I've left at 10 or 11 o'clock every night. No traffic until this morning, the last six miles before I got to the Flying J that I'm at, I, I finally hit some traffic the last six miles. Other than that, it was a wide open road, just just booking. Love, love the night drive. And I wanna talk about three things on this video. First, I'm gonna show you Qualcomm, a little trick, uh, a little uh, thing to keep in mind with your Qualcomm when you go off duty. And uh, I'm gonna also discuss how this job is like a wild wild west film and then we're going to also cover some emails so let me start with the qualcomm let me just switch the camera so you can see it and i'll be right back with you okay on your qualcomm let's discuss on your 30 minute dot break two things to keep in mind when you're on your break okay like in this case I'm off duty now, and I'm on my 10 hour, but let's just assume that I was on my 30 minute DOT and I pulled in wherever I'm gonna stop and I've gone off duty for my 30 minute DOT break. This Qualcomm system will only start you traveling again. It'll automatically put you back on driving status if you go more than 25 miles an hour and you're more than two miles from where you went off duty. So if your truck is stopped and you go off duty, as long as you stay within two miles radius of that point and you stay under 25 miles per hour, this will leave you off duty even if the truck is moving. I tell you that because it's caught me twice now and I realized, I realized my mistake finally. I went off duty, I was on my 30 minute DOT and it was getting down to the last couple minutes of it and there was a line of trucks waiting to get out of the parking lot. So I went on and jumped in line behind the trucks, figuring by the time they, that I get to my point to turn and get out of the parking lot, I'll be at 31, 32, 33 minutes. And when I start getting up to speed again, it'll automatically go back to driving, but I'll be at the 32, 33 minute point and my 30 minute DOT has been met. Well, that did not happen because once you move your truck, from where you stopped it, once you move it, unless you physically put yourself on duty at the 30 minute point, physically go from off duty to on duty, and then let it adjust from on duty to driving once you start moving above 25 miles an hour and get more than two miles from your location. If you've been moving the truck while you've been off duty and it you began moving it before the 30 minute point, the truck will calculate on the Qualcomm system from that moment the wheels began moving. Once you get up to speed, once you, like in this case, I got to the end of the parking lot, I got out of the parking lot, got up to speed on the interstate, and the Qualcomm kicked out and said that I had uh, less than an hour of drive time left because it did not register my full 30 minute break because I started moving the truck at 28 minutes. Even though I was within two miles, of the where I went off duty, even though I was under 25 miles an hour initially, I moved the truck, did not physically put myself on duty, and then let the system take me from on duty to driving after the 30 minute point. Just be conscious of that. And I hope you followed that, that logic and that reasoning. So if you're moving your truck while you're on your 30 minute DOT, you need to physically put yourself on duty before you start driving down the road. Normally, if you're starting up, and let's say it's 35 minutes into your DOT break, your truck has not moved from when you went off duty. When you start moving, your truck will put you in drive status once you get more than two miles from where you went off duty and once you get above 25 miles an hour. But if you began moving your truck before the 30 minute point, it's gonna register that point in time when it puts you back in driving status since your truck began moving. Keep that in mind because you get caught in a, uh, and I've, I've heard more than one or two people getting caught on the Qualcomm system because they started moving before it registered the full 30 minutes and they didn't physically put themselves on duty. 
before it picked up the drive status. Just one more tip. Let's talk now about how this is a wild, wild west environment out here. Now, as far as this business being like the wild, wild west, in every western movie you see these guys ride their horses into town and then they go up and take a bath. The first bath they probably had in a week, two weeks, or a month, or three months. And they come downstairs looking totally different. Coming out of these showers at these travel centers is exactly like that if you haven't taken a shower in three or four days or longer. And uh, it's exactly what goes through my mind when I come out of the shower and how fresh I feel after you know not having a shower. Not normally, three or four days is the most I'll normally go, but it's still a, it's still a marked difference in your mindset just getting cleaned up, getting showered up, freshened up, and then coming out and getting back in your truck. It's very much like a, like a Western movie, very much like uh, parking your horse outside, going to the saloon and taking care of business with a with bath. So let's now discuss some emails that I've gotten in the last couple uh, weeks. We'll go ahead and handle that now, and uh, let me answer some emails. All right, let's discuss some uh, email questions from uh, Packrat. You asked about having an APU or not having an APU, which companies, I don't know, you just need to call them. Um, I did all that research back in uh, in February of this year, so it's been, you know, eight months ago, six, seven months ago, so just call them. If you, only, if you don't have an APU, an, an auxiliary power unit that has the air conditioning heating system that runs when the truck's off, most companies allow you to idle. Um, I shouldn't say most, probably all of them, because it's actually a federal, it's a federal, uh, issue if you're not getting your good 10 hours rest and if you're in a vehicle that's too cold or too hot that's a that's a federal issue so most of the companies from my understanding all allow idling if you don't have an APU in your truck but as far as which ones do or don't you just need to call them and find out um, Edward you asked about what what should you do to get over being possibly homesick when you go to your new company which you're starting with them and they have four weeks of training, possibly more. So I can tell you, man, I compartmentalize so much in my life because of my, my abusive background. So it's very easy for me to compartmentalize things and, you know, put my family there and put my business here and put, you know, other, just keep things in their box. It's very, very easy for me to do that. Do I miss my family, my, my wife and my kids while I'm out here? Yeah. But you know what? One of the things my wife and I do is we have an agreement that we don't talk about how much either one of us misses the other one. Um, it's not a subject of conversation because it's a conversation that'll lead you down an emotional path. Sometimes it's just not. It's just not going to be healthy. You need to be focused out here to making your career change, making your financial change for your 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 family. You each you you both know you're going to miss each other. You're going to miss your kids. You are initially, but your wife is there with them but you're gonna change your, your family's financial destiny by doing this, this job. If you commit to it, become a student of the game, get past the six to 12 months and then make those moves, and then eventually get a truck maybe and be more regional for yourself, more localized. But there's always gonna be a trade-off for making a financial step forward. The best I can tell you is try to keep those conversations with your wife to a minimum and talk about all the great things happening and all the great things going on. That's the best I can tell you. Um, and what if what if the company keeps you out longer? You also asked that, Edward. You know, it could happen, man. You just got to be prepared. You got to you got to prepare for whatever is going to happen and deal with it and be professional about it. Because you just want to get through your first six to twelve months, get your experience where other doors open up for you. Whether you decide to move to a different company, whether you decide to become a lease operator, owner operator. You just need to get that experience. So you just need to be almost of the mindset that no matter what happens in the first six to nine months, you're going to be unbreakable mentally. That's what I, that's what I would tell you. Um, you asked, also asked about safety while you're in your truck. I'm normally at truck stops. I, I will stay, you know, to Walmart, a Home Depot, a Lowe's if I need to, based on the situation. Um, I have a heavy-duty flashlight, which is pretty hefty. I have a small little uh, metal baseball bat. And you know what? One of the biggest keys, you know, if you're awakened by somebody breaking in, into your truck and they're already in the truck when you wake up, just go crazy early. You know, that's the best I can tell you because uh, all the studies have proven this includes, you know, folks that have children when you're talking to them about the, the situation, just being in town and somebody, you know, getting in your car. 
if you're ever in a situation where somebody's in your vehicle that's not invited to be in your vehicle or they're about to, you know, kidnap you or do whatever they're going to do, it's been proven over and over again that if you stay in the vehicle with them or get in the vehicle with them, let's say that they, they you know, put a gun to your head as you're walking to your car in a dark parking lot, studies are proven over and over and over by, you know, law enforcement professionals that if you get in that vehicle, you stay in that vehicle, you're going to probably die. So you just need to go crazy early if that's the case. I don't think about that a lot because I tell you what, these truck stops, I would pity the fool that comes to a truck stop and starts acting out. These guys and these ladies out here, the truck stop is a safe haven mentally. And I really believe that you would have whoever did that, whoever acted out like that would have a very tough time surviving the initial encounter on a truck, on a truck stop environment. This is the last place that a zombie apocalypse should ever happen because I think these truckers would would, would per, be very protective of their turf um, from what I've seen. Uh, most truck stops I've been around have been very, very safe, uh, very, they have, you know, outdoor cameras and everyone is in the same situation. So I just don't think you're going to have a big problem with that. If you're at a truck stop that's not really well known or you're, you're parking on the side of the road sleeping. It could, it could be an issue for sure. So just make sure you have some common items like a heavy duty flashlight, et cetera, that can double as weapons. Um, Andrew, you talked about being 21 years old and getting into this. Man, listen, the, the younger the better, especially if you don't want to you know, finish college or go to college and you just want to start making money. For a 21 year old person that's not scared of hustling, not scared of traveling, this business can, can really be effective for you to get your feet under you. And I would say go with whatever company gets you in their, in their pipeline of training, get the experience, and then start building your career from there. This is one of the best kept secrets for young folks that don't want to go to college, I think. Because you can even drive regionally and be home on weekends, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Some jobs even being home every night. Just depends on the company. And it, I think in your situation, you're up in the Northwest, there's a, a limited selection of companies. Just find one that's going to train you, get your six to nine, 12 months experience. You be the, let that be your focus and rock and roll. Carrie, you asked about driverless trucks, um, what the, you know, what the future is going to hold. I don't know, man. I mean, you know, driverless cars are out there now with Google cars. Uh, Elon Musk doing his driverless car deal as well. Google's actually getting into that business pretty, pretty large. The 18-wheel trucks, my son actually works on the telematics, which is the driverless platform for these 18-wheel trucks with the firm he's with. Um, I still think the 18-wheel trucks is going to be probably, you know, a decade or two out. All of that a, a while out. It, they might be available pretty quickly, but I just don't think that's going to be something that's going to affect our current industry in the next one to five years directly. Will it be there in maybe 10 to 15, 20 years? Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. But it's going to be a minute. There's uh, still so much to adjust and, and, and correct um, with that. And then Manny, DOT physical, you asked about that because you're concerned even though you, you passed your, your two-year DOT and got your, uh, your medical card for two years, you're about to start with the company. You're about to start talking to companies to go with them. Listen, what I would tell you to do is find the companies that when you send them everything, they don't need to get you re-screened re or retested re for your physical because there are companies out there that do that. That if you send them everything you have, including your CDL, they're going to pre-approve you short of a drug test when you walk in the door. So just make those phone calls, man. Find those companies because there are companies that will take your two-year medical card that you already have and they won't put you back through a second physical where the stress of that may be elevate your blood pressure, whatever else, or in, I think in your case, you're worried about weight. Um, I've seen some big dudes out here, some big girls out here too, you know, big people, and they've got theirs and they've passed and they're out here driving trucks. So I would first and foremost focus on the companies that get you pre-approved, so there's no reason to go back through a full physical when you go on board, and just get in the door and get your training, get your experience. That's what I would tell you to do. So those are the three things. We discussed the uh, Qualcomm with the off-duty, and making sure that you stay within those those parameters so the Qualcomm doesn't put you back on driving status. We discussed how this is like the wild, wild west out here and then answer some email questions. Listen, if you like the videos, subscribe, like, comment, and share. You can reach me at the email address above. None of us get out of here live. 
I still don't know what you're waiting on. Don't wait. Make your move. Red Viking Trucker is out.